Gators, and you're listening to The MBS Show. Hello and welcome to The MBS Show, episode number 64. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Before we start the show, I'd like to say a big thank you to Microsoft for announcing the Xbox One. Now, bronies have something else to rant about besides Equestria Girls, and introducing my co-host, Dan. Hi, Norman. How are you, Dan? I'm okay. Pretty good for once. Really? Now, what do you do today? I just did my homework. You sound so calm. Yeah, I don't know why. It has this sense of zen in the air today. Okay. I don't know if I should be afraid or should be happy about it. Be happy. It's better. Okay. So, introducing our guest for this week, he is an awesome musician who does a lot of music on YouTube and not all of them are brony music, which is a good thing. You need variety in life. Introducing our guest, Aviators. Hello. Hey, Aviators. How are you? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. A little groggy, but I'm great. Sorry for the early schedule. The show, That's okay. <laughs> the show is in a different time zone. It's all upside down, topsy-turvy, and uh, whatever the doctor says. That's right. It's wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. Yes, yes. So before we start the show, um, to make sure the space time continuum stays afloat, we need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is who is your favorite character? Oh gosh. This is a, a very controversial question. I can't pick any single character of the main six as my we favorite. Allow multiple choice. Oh, do we? Okay. Yes, we do. Um, I do have one specific favorite, but I have to explain first. The, re- the reason why it's not one of the main six is because they're all equally strong characters that are all equally developed. Um, I mean, obviously they've developed Twilight a little bit more, uh, but not so much more that it's she's that everybody's biased towards her, which I like. They, they've still uh, kept her in check with everybody else. Um, but, I mean, come on. There's no one more awesome than Luna. <laughs> I mean, there really isn't. I mean, just the character design. I mean, even her voice, Tabitha St. Germain. Oh my mm. gosh, she's a great character. I wish I had a penny for every time somebody answered Luna. I'll be rich. Yep. Oh, she's, well, she's... I, I think the reason everybody loves Princess Luna is because uh, she's not like any other character in the entire show. You know, she's the quiet, dark type. It's like she's a warrior, almost. You know, that's that's the type of character she is. Of course, we never see her in battle or anything, which I'm hoping we will someday, because that would be amazing. She does it in her sleep, it's in her dreams, you know? Well, exactly, you know, she's kind of a dream warrior. It's almost, it's like, you know, she's like a, she's like the Inception pony. (laughs) Well, if you want to see Luna in action, you should go read um, the IDW comic. Because right now, in the storyline, they're facing Nightmare Moon again. Don't spoil it! I well, know. thanks. Thanks for the spoilers. Wow. Oh, trust me, it's not what you think. Uh, go read book number... I think it's book number five? Five, six, and so on. I think they're going for four. So it's going to be five, six, and seven, and eight. Right now, it's only to book seven or six. I can't remember. You're the only one on the show crew who reads the comic. I know. Which I don't is... read it. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I... Finally, we have a guest that doesn't read the comic. I want to, though. I want to. Uh, after the show, I'll link you to something. After the show, I'll link you to something. So, Luna is your favorite character. Okay, cool, cool. So, what's your favorite episode? I honestly don't think I can pick. Um, so, I says once again. Well, that, this would be a long list then. Oh, God. Um, I have a lot of favorite episodes for different reasons. I think overall, I think the most recent one, the season three finale, is my favorite. Mostly because I feel for the creators, for uh, for the writer, for everybody, because Hasbro threw that on them. They didn't want to turn Twilight into an alicorn, but they had to anyway. And they pulled it off so beautifully. They even threw in a plot twist, the fact that this was the point of the show until now. You know, each each trial uh, they all went through was for Twilight to learn how to become a become royalty. Basically, I thought that was genius. And of course, the music in the episode was fantastic. I think it'll always be a legend of an episode. Okay, I can understand why because to me the show was well. Some people might say pacing was off, too many songs, and blah blah. It was blah. rushed. It was definitely rushed, but I. 
I think that's only because they weren't allowed to uh, stretch it to two episodes. Ooh, you know, yeah. I think they were strapped into 13 episodes for the season. Mm-hmm. And then by the end, they didn't have time to make another one. So they just had to squeeze it all into one episode. Yeah, that's true. But I have to say, um, during the whole episode, we only, what, no, during the whole season, we only had, what, um, th- three songs, five songs, something like that. And well, it was a short season. Yeah, but still, just imagine how many songs we had throughout um, the first season. Like, okay, we had like 14 songs. Yay. Here, do a, a mixtape album. Yay, you go ahead. And season two. Yay, you could do also a mixtape. Now, in season three, with the 13 short episodes, we might think that, oh, uh, we might have a song each episode, but no. But the songs that came out in season three were not bad. We got Bab Seeds, Racist Barn. Oh, they, they were the, some of the best so far. Yeah. I mean, yep. Racist Barn, not my favorite. That was very repetitive and pretty annoying. Um, it's country music. What do you expect? <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, um, no, I agree. <laughs> but um, They were aiming for a hoedown anyway. <laughs> of course, it fit. It worked. Um, I've got to find a way. It's definitely one of the best of all time. Uh, the Crystal Fair, that was a great song. Oh, yes. It is so um, short. Well, all the songs are pretty short. I really wish the Crystal Fair one had an extended version or something. Like oh, Daniel Ingram might have some. Yeah. Might, might have some. Well, I know I've Got to Find a Way apparently has an extended version that we've never heard. <laughs> oh, boy. We, we need the high-end brony musicians to go talk to Daniel Ingram. Mingle around. Hey, yeah. aviators, you're a high-end brony musician, right? <laughs> Well, I have him on Skype, but he never answers me. <laughs> oh, <Aww. laughs> that face. But anyway, um, see the the final um season for the song list seven songs. Take that, <laughs> and yeah. all, all of them were good. So anyway, um, how did you become a fan of the show? Well, it was uh, kind of through music, actually. Um, I had, well, okay, not not really, not at first. Uh, the how I first watched the show was just uh, finding it in the most viewed videos on YouTube. Uh, it was Looney Clips, which was the first episode I ever watched. Um, but it might have something to do with my favorite character. <laughs> but, you know, I saw it there on YouTube. I had heard about the show, you know, and that it was cool. Previously, I, I just kind of thought nothing of it. I just thought, oh, it's just, you know, Futurama Adventure Time. It's one of those weird cartoons that people watch. Um... And then I saw it here, and I was bored, and I just thought, you know what? I'm going to try this. Five minutes into the show, I knew I was really addicted. And like a week later, I had watched all of season one and the four episodes that were um, up until season two. And shortly after that, uh, I began listening to Brony music. I had actually, I was actually familiar with some Brony music before uh, I would watched the show, like The Living Tombstone and Alex S. Mm-hmm. Um... I had heard a couple of their songs. I knew that they were Brony musicians. I didn't quite know why. You know, I didn't know anything about the show. I just listened to the music. Uh, And at the time, they were both mostly instrumental artists. This was, of course, you know, uh, fall of 2011. So this was a while ago. You know, at that point, I I saw the the music being made uh, after knowing what the show was. And I thought, you know what? This is uh, really cool. I should get in contact with these artists. And I did. Uh, I started talking to the Living Tombstone, uh, and he really helped me, you know, develop my musical skills, and eventually he got me started on making Brony-themed music. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, Looking here, you you started off late. Um, According to the calendar, you say you watch Lunar Eclipse, right? So that's in October of 2011. That's way back when, before... Let's just say this way back when. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, I'm not like, uh, you know, like, uh, your B. Brony or anything who started like on episode three of season one, you know, some, some of the musicians have been around a long time. I'm actually something of a latecomer, at least as far as the, as far as, well, I don't want to use this term, but you know, the more popular musicians, you yeah. know, I don't. I, I hate when we're, we're when we're classified as you know the the celebrities of the fandom because we're not. There are other better musicians. True, um, true. But, but let's just say you're the most well known because. Yeah, well known. That's the word I'm looking for. 
Yeah. But in music, it's all to each their own, and depending on the style, like I love your style, and some other people may not agree with me, but I honestly do love listening to your music. I blasted in the car all day long. <laughs> oh, thank you. And well, I, I think that's a good, uh, you know, a good, a good point that some people are gonna like it, some people are not, and I've, I come to accept that. Uh, one thing I don't like is when people have to force their opinion and, uh, and just hate on things anyway. Um, some people are really respectful. I'll get a comment now and again that says, you know what, I enjoy what you're doing here. I didn't really like this song. I'll listen again later to something else. And, you know, that's a respectful thing to say. That's just a nice, all right, didn't like this, but that's okay. Okay. Um, and, you know, I take no offense to that. But once in a while you get a troll that says, this is the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. You know, oh. Stop making music. Yeah, those kind of comments... Yeah, throw them away. They're not helpful. they're not helpful at all. They're not helpful at all. No, of course not. But but then again, they're not trying to be. You know, yeah. they're just yeah. trolling. Yeah. Although I've seen one troll comment that I'm not sure whether to take correctly or not. There's one guy who posted on Silverhound's YouTube video saying that why are all these good musicians polluting their good music with ponies and making it bad music? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that's just your opinion, man. <laughs> No, is it a good thing or a bad thing? You said good music. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I just give a golf clap. <laughs> <clears throat> but funny enough, um, aviators, you you started off pretty late in the show, like most of the other popular bronies, like Final Draft from EFN. He started off with the same episode, strangely enough. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah. I've known Final Draft for a while. Yeah, I, I think I he said that. that he, yeah, he said that during our interview with him, he said that he started off on that episode and move on to create every free radio and stuff. And well, look look at him where he is now. Yeah, no kidding. I, I say that the season two bronies, they're the most popular ones. <laughs> yeah, season well, two really it, did a lot. Yeah, it huh? did. Season two brought in a new wave of people. Because I think season one really got some of the uh, really dedicated guys like Living Tombstone, uh, Yerby Brony, Alex S. And that summer, it mm -hmm. kind of gave the fandom a chance to simmer. And when the show started back up in season two, it exploded. And so much more talent came in. I'm not even talking about, you know, what I did. I mean, there were a lot of people who uh, came in the same time as I did. Um, I'm trying to think of some. Uh, so Great and Powerful, I believe he started around that time. Oh, really? Um, yeah. I thought he was uh, a little later, actually. Uh, he was a little bit later than I was, but he's, you know, it was around the time. Okay. It's hard to, it's hard to remember when he put up his stuff, because he always deletes his stuff <laughs> after. Oh, it's no fun. Uh, you capture yeah. the for good albums. Oh. Can't run away there. <laughs> of course. Oh. Okay, uh, moving on to the last question. What do your families and friends think about your love for the show? They're very supportive. They understand the whole, uh, you know, I'm part of a fandom thing. I don't think they quite get it. Still, <laughs> they understand. They support the, the whole music thing, you know, helping me uh, develop my skills and furthering it into a possible career. Awesome. Um, and friends, uh, I get made fun of a lot. <laughs> Um, but that's okay. It's never, like, hurtful stuff. You know, it's just the, the classic, uh, you know, friends picking on your stuff. Uh, okay. okay. So, let me guess. You go outside wearing your brony t-shirt? Oh, I've got a few of them, yeah. Okay. So, that could be it. <laughs> that could be it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know to consider myself lucky or unlucky because over here in Malaysia, we don't have any much brony haters or anything like that. Which means no teasing, no reaction. At the same time, there's no teasing and there's no reaction. You want to step into my campus? Oh, I dare. They don't dare say a word to me. <laughs> Seriously, I'm the kind of person who don't give a damn what you think. And I'm the polite and soft kind. And okay, uh, you make fun of my t-shirt. Uh, uh, what, what car you drive? Who's paying for it? Your daddy? Uh, ain't your daddy little boy. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. You, go. you know, I can make fun of people if I want to, but it's wrong, says Fluttershy. Uh, well, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, you know, though, you gotta, you gotta uh, fight fire with fire there. I you know. You know, not, not being hurtful, but it's always, uh, 
It's always fun to uh, make fun of uh, people for what they're making fun of you for. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, when they're just, when they're making fun of, uh, well, like on the internet, when people are saying, oh, you're a brony, what are you watch a show for little girls and stuff. And then, you know, like occasionally I'll go to a commenter's channel and then make fun of him for what he watches. That's really fun. <laughs> it's really, really fun. Okay. And of course, it's, it's a troll. Oh. But mine? Yeah, like there's one on uh, BronyCon when, what's his name? Bronified was it? And he said, I may not be able to make it next year. And you said, I'm going over there to kidnap you if you're not going to come. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Bronyfied. <laughs> Great friends. We, I, 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 pro- I probably would kidnap him. <laughs> He's oh, not so uh, I think we're diverting to internet name calling now. <laughs> of course, yeah, that's what the show's for, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. You, you, you're the ho- you're the guest. We just follow what the guest is. <laughs> So, uh, oh, you were going to say I'm the host there for a second. I was like, wait, what? I was about to derp. <laughs> I just, I'm just going to take over for you, okay? Uh, I was about to derp, but uh, no, I, I can hold the ring. I can hold the ring. Welcome to the Aviator Show. <laughs> That's right. That's right. This is what this is. And then somebody searches on iTunes and thinks it's a show about helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, we're going to talk about planes today. Totally oh. not the Xbox One. We're not going to talk about the Xbox One. We're going to talk about Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, God, That's no. right. Oh, I've been this Microsoft year. Aviator Simulator. Simula- oh. Simulator. Gosh, oh. I can't even talk today. Oh, I've been this shit. I think let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> and the next topic is housekeeping. Um, Dan, you got anything to housekeep? No, sir. Uh, same here, except for Microsoft did a great job. <laughs> uh, let's move I on. I sincerely think Microsoft did a great job, but that's just me. <laughs> Oh, keep your appearance as yourself, then. Nobody's agree with you. I think Microsoft tried their best, but it's just not quite there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's uh, a, <laughs> I see what you, you did know, there. It's just not there. Yeah. I'll give you an A for effort. They kick their Xbox and say it's just not fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, let's move on to news time. And in today's news time, Script for Equestria Girls appeared in March of 2012. In a recent tweet by Megan McCartney, she stated that the Equestria Girl script was locked in March of 2012. This would mean that Equestria Girl was in the works during the peak of its hype. Pictures can be found in the show notes. So, Dan, what do you think um, Equestria Girls way before it became popular? This means that Twilight Corn was actually locked in a long, long time ago. Not really, because the script was there, and also there's a few things that need to be worked on. But yeah, could be Twilight Corn was also there because they need to write the script for that one too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't and, think uh, it necessarily had to mean that she was an alicorn when they wrote the script, because it looks like yes, she's an alicorn, obviously in the movie, but it doesn't look like it plays in at all. Cause she doesn't have wings as a human, right? Yeah, no. I mean, she was going so, to though. No, no, no. That was the well, concept art. Concept art, yes. So it kind of led up something that I thought maybe they wouldn't nah. be going in that direction. I don't know. No, I, so, okay. Um, I'll just clarify something the concept art for the show was them having different skins as in the trailer the other concept art that came out where they had pony ears wings and really freakishly long hair that one could be a concept art for the marketing doll thing that they're gonna do okay yeah logically thinking that could be it but um if it does what you gonna say just now i mean i don't I want to be careful here because I know uh, I know Equestria Girls is a really uh, it's a really hot uh, touchy. You know, uneven topic. It's a touchy subject. Yeah, it's. I feel I'm willing to give it a chance. I don't think it's a good idea to uh, take something that's uh, so controversial right now, <laughs> uh, which would be you know the, just the whole show, My Little Pony, because I mean we just had something very controversial happen. You know, our one of our favorite characters, Twilight, was just completely changed into something else. The show has taken a complete random change that just happened really suddenly. And I think they're kind of throwing us, uh, throwing us something else here. Um, I'm not sure if it's on purpose or not, because Hasbro, I almost feel like they like drama. <laughs> I, oh. It does seem like they kind of, they're kind of egging us on. Um, it has a it, good point. Well, I mean, if you think about it, it's, you know, they, they always leak little things slowly. 
and it's always, <laughs> it almost seems like they're leaking the most controversial things. <laughs> like, just they're just trying to get us riled up. But riling up people creates internet rants and all kinds of, you know, it's free advertising. So <laughs> I, I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, that could be a marketing strategy of theirs. <laughs> That's not a one I prefer, but hey. Um, I think the biggest reason they're doing Equestria Girls is to sell toys, though. True. You know, I, just I, dolls I, of uh, the human ponies, which is, which is so it's so hollow of them, you know? No, it's because I, 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 I mentioned this in, a, in, in the previous episode and a few other shows, is that if you go to a toy store, like Toys R Us, Target, or whatever, look at the section for dolls and look at every brand notice something missing there's no dolls from Hasbro yeah so now Hasbro wants a piece of the pie logically speaking they want that money they want that doll money the market doll money thing so create a show dedicated to little girls school thing relate blah 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 and push it out there so people would just nab it and buy it or something like collect all six and yay buy all places and toys yay and, right. and we get rich I, of it yeah, I, I can bring them this makes sense I just wish Hasbro would kind of embrace the whole uh, the whole uh, Disney philosophy I'm not the that big of a fan <laughs> of Disney shows of course until Gravity Falls mm-hmm. um, Gravity Falls I don't know if you guys have ever seen that show but I've heard of it I've heard of it it's Disney. basically it's a show that is what shows used to be. <laughs> um, you know, it, they they take an idea, they put a lot of time into it, they really they animate it perfectly, um, and it feels like they're making the show um, to be. They're not, it's not a marketing scam, you know. It's it's just a really good show, and they're finding success off of that. It's one of the first shows that's kind of embraced that in a long time. You know, I mean, there there were all kinds of shows like that back in the nineties, uh, you know, early uh, 2000, 2000 through two thousand five, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, the kids, the the, the shows, uh, you know, my generation used to watch as kids. You know, I think that's kind of changed now. It's kids shows are now uh, just long ads for the toys. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But essentially, right now, is the, the way the market works in um, toy marketing is the show is to sell the toys. So, exactly. create a show that sells the toys. Like, if you remember back in the days, there's Beyblade. Remember those oh, top spinning yes. things? Oh, like, <laughs> but wasn't My Little Pony originally <clears throat> created based on that purpose? Yeah, but the thing is... Well, back of course it was. They were toys before they were a show, I think. Yeah, it's just that... Um, I think Dick or Hasbro. I, I couldn't remember who was the person Hasbro responsible. Hasbro from Bonnie Zachary. Yeah, but who created the show? Was it Hasbro Studios? Or was there no Hasbro Studios back then? I remember there's this one prominent cartoon company called DIC, Dick. Oh, yeah, it's Dick. Yeah. If you remember, Dick, they created all the classics like Smurf, Care Bears, Bears, Inspector Gadget. Oh, God, who could not forget Inspector Gadget? Inspector Gadget by Dick? Yeah, way back when. Oh, that is a very unfortunate name. (laughs) (laughs) I know. But, c'est la vie, c'est la vie. (laughs) No, but um, toys and marketing and stuff, it's, it's the name of the game nowadays, really. Although of one course. thing surprises me is that why hasn't a doll fallen off a truck in China yet? Oy, oy, oy. It's uh, bound to happen. It's really bound to happen. It, it, well, heck, I mean, if Apple can keep their iPhones in factories for like for like months before releases, when there are all kinds of secret agents trying to get <laughs> at them, I think they they could probably keep a doll from uh, leaking. I think this could be another case where the Chinese man is like, huh. This doll look like Monster High. Not sure if should post on My Little Pony forum. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh no. So, avoid. Or maybe the the doll skin purple. The color is wrong. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Dan, why don't you take the next one? Yes, sir. And coming back to Equestria Girls, it's going to be shown in the Los Angeles Film Festival. 
If you have followed any news on Equestria Girls, you'll know that the movie is going to premiere on the 16th of June. That's just in a few days' time. Hasbro Studios is confident in the movie, and they've entered it in the Los Angeles Film Festival. The movie will premiere one day earlier, June 15th, and will be shown at the Regal Cinemas 1 at 4pm. Ticket prices are $13. Links can be found in the show notes. So, Norman, are you going? I wish. <laughs> I wish, seriously. So now that you see Hasbro Studios is confident, so does this boost your confidence? I don't know. It's kind of a wait and see attitude for me. Like, should I watch it because it's a My Little Pony movie and I watch it. If it's in the theater, I watch it, but it's not. So I can't do anything about it. I personally am just going to wait for it to come online. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that, yeah, you know, enthusiastic about going to see it. Um, I, I get that Hasbro's excited about it, but that doesn't mean a lot to me. Because, of course, they're excited about it. They're going to sell a billion toys. You know? I mean, it doesn't, they don't, the movie doesn't have to do well. It's a mark. like I said, it's a marketing, uh, you know, scam. It's not a scam, I guess, but, you know, it's just, they're just trying to uh, market their new line of dolls, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can imagine, you know, uh, I, I believe it's uh, DHX is doing this. Yep, yep. Um, it's, they did it all. Um, so I, I'm sure it's going to be of similar quality to the show. Um, you know, I'm sure it'll be a good, it, it, I imagine it'll be like any other episode, just a long episode. Um, so I'm not expecting anything fancy. I'm not willing to go pay extra money to see it in the theaters. I'll buy it when it comes on iTunes or something. I haven't heard any of the show's creators from DHX going, oh, yeah, this is going to be the best thing we've ever done, which they do say that sometimes when they're going to release something good, um, like like the season three finale. I was hearing from all kinds of, uh, all kinds of show, show uh, creators that they, um, they were really excited about it. I haven't heard anything like that, so I'm just going to assume that it's just kind of going to be, eh, you know? <laughs> That's the only. That's that's my expectation. Okay, understandable, understandable. I think the same point here is, um, if you let's just say that if um, the Equestria Girl won the LA Film Festival for Best Animation Animated Film or something like that, they can at least slap that label on their DVD cover. Spark, says and the dolls you know, from the award-winning movie. <laughs> I don't think yeah. that doll works, but it does help a lot when you try to promote it in the sense of DVD sales and stuff. Yes, it would. Gives you an excuse to jack up the price as well. Oh, hell no. Don't you dare. <laughs> no, but I don't know. I like that they're confident and they're not, you know, sending it in and you know, it's something like, because if it falls flat, maybe the kids won't complain, but we will. They'll be like, see, we told you so. Yeah, but the thing is, it's not um, only this. Like, the LA Film Festival, it op- it's open to every type of film. So, meaning the Fast and Furious 6 could also enter and win something? Okay. If they turn to votes, maybe, you know, Equestria Girls could stand a chance. <laughs> oh, no. So, I, I think uh, we kick Equestria Girl to the curb too much now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let's move well, on. I'm still nervous excited about it. So, yeah, let's go. That's not a word. I don't care. Pinky said it, it's a word. And Applejack said it's not. I don't care what Applejack says. Ay, ay, ay. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have the one and only Aviators. How are you doing, Aviators? I'm doing pretty, I'm doing pretty good. Hope you're having a good time, enjoying yourself, and not being too groggy early in the morning. No, I'm, I'm zoning out, but, you know, I'm good. good. I'm going to go back to bed after this. <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay, so cool. Um, okay, anyway, um... Mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Um, sure. I am a, uh, I, an independent Brony musician uh, who makes music for the fun of it. And often my music is about uh, the show we all know and love. Awesome, awesome. So, so the first obvious question is, how did you get started? Well, I mean, I kind of mentioned, you know, my start uh, in the show earlier. And uh, my start in uh, making Brony music was pretty much the same. Uh, getting started in music itself happened, you know, many years ago. Uh, I played 
violin from age three, actually. Whoa. Um, yeah, so... It's really early. Yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> it was. Of course, you know, I was no good at it. It was just kind of a, you know, getting started early in music education, that kind of stuff. Um, I, you know, it's, that's, it was a progression, I guess. You know, it, it started out uh, with something simple like that. Um, and then after a while it became composition. I learned how to compose music at like age nine or something. Oh my. Um, you know, I was oh, composing wow. sheet music. Um, of course I wasn't really that good at that either. <laughs> Um, and it wasn't until early 2011 that I actually got into production. Uh, you know, I picked up GarageBand and I started uh, playing around with that. Of course, that's very different than composing sheet music. That's production, that's sequencing. It's yeah. really, you know, the music theory is the same, but that's it. Um, so I had to practice knowing what's, what notes sound good with each other, knowing what notes are, knowing what chords are. You know, I, I knew that stuff. Um, but I was basically starting from nothing. Mm. And, uh, a year later I was, uh, I was moving on to, uh, FL Studio and I was making broken music. Wow. That's amazing. From GarageBand to FL Studio to becoming the person that you are now. Awesome. I have GarageBand. Yeah. I should do something about it. I always thought that <laughs> GarageBand users move up to Logic. Um, I have Logic, uh, but I do actually prefer using FL Studio. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, I, I actually have... Uh, I use Logic sometimes, actually. Um, oh, okay. Some of my uh, more popular songs have been created with Logic, actually. Um, I'm sure you guys have... If you know my music, you probably heard The Fear of Flight. Ooh, oh, yeah. yes. Um, the first song of yours that I heard. Yeah, that that's that was made in Logic. Uh, my song Heroes was made in Logic. Um, the Real Me. There, a, bunch of, a bunch of my songs have been made in Logic, um, mostly because I... I'm familiar with GarageBand and that interface. Yep. Um, but, you know, FL Studio is my uh, program of choice. Okay, so talking I about... I still can't understand FL Studio till today. That's why I always say it's like this alien control panel. <laughs> so, uh, talking about tools of the trade. So, you, you mentioned that you use FL Studio. You, you use Logic Pro. So, um, do you have any other tools that you use besides those two? Um, what do you mean, like hardware or like plugins? Mm, why not both? Because um, from what I know is there's uh, VSTs to install on Fruity Lo- uh, on FL. Yeah, I know. That's the right, yeah. There's the plugins um, to install. Yeah, I've in. got all kinds of plugins. I've, I've got a bunch of synthesizers, a bunch of sample packs. I use a lot of uh, Contact. Contact. Oh, Five. Contact. Okay. From Native Instruments. Uh, that's a great VST, a sampler VST. Um, you know, that's, I use that in almost every song I've ever done. As far as synthesizers go, uh, you know, I use mostly, uh, Silent One or Silent. I've never known how to pronounce that correctly. Um, I also use Massive. Uh, that's one of the most popular synthesizers ever. Yeah. Uh, I use FM8, um, Harmer, which is an image line plugin, uh, you know, they're the makers of FL Studio, so it integrates nicely. Uh, Morphine, which is also an, an image line plugin, you know. So which and, one did you use for Fear of Flight? Uh, I mean, as far as uh, plugins go? Yeah, for the strings. Oh, for the strings. That was a uh, library of contact. I believe that was Symphobia I ah. used for those strings. I've got to check that out. It was. It sounded amazing. Oh, well, thank you. So it's you, not my, not my best uh, orchestra work, but hey, that was a uh, it was a fun song to do. Oh, it sounded yeah. good, man! Like the starting rhythm, move. It was really powerful. That's what I like to say when people ask me about Brony music. You're one of the candidates I like to show because for some reason I like the depth that you put into it. It's got the feel that it's not just happy songs about <laughs> rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, any hardware that you use, like MIDI keyboards or anything like that? Uh, um, I use my most commonly used uh, piece of hardware is actually uh, my uh, Novation Launchpad. I'm sure you guys have seen those in YouTube videos and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a it's a very common uh, MIDI controller. Um, 
I ha- I didn't use it a lot until about a month ago, actually, because uh, they released the new uh, FL Studio 11, and uh, of course that is fully integrated with the launch pad. Um, oh. you know, I, I don't need to do any MIDI routing or anything. It just works natively, and I can use it actually as a MIDI keyboard, um, which is wonderful. Uh, and that's a great feature. Um, aside from that, I um, I have uh, a bunch of other hardware. I have a Tascam audio interface, um, 14 channels, you know, all that, all that junk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's how I get my... Uh, my acoustic sounds into my computer. Uh, my mic is a uh, is a Bluebird, you know, from Blue Mics. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's actually a new piece of equipment, and I'm loving it. Um, Are you? Is it? When did you get it? Uh, I got it about a month ago. So prior to that, how did you record your voice? What did you use? Well, I have I have other mics, um, but I. It used an MXL 990, which is also a decent mic, um, but I like this one much better. Okay. So um, before we move on, I have to say congratulations on winning the Hey Ocean contest. Oh, wait, I haven't won. You're first place, right? Well, that uh, doesn't necessarily mean you win. Um, first place is mostly just you have the most votes. Uh, hey Ocean actually has to pick uh, individually hmm. from the... Uh, from the submissions. Oh, so uh, shows me what uh, I know. Sad, sadly, I haven't actually won. Oh uh, well, congratulations on getting first place by the vote pick from the people. Thank you. Because uh, I've heard it and I like it. Thank you. I'm, I was really happy with how that turned out. So, um, how did the process of working with it? Um, how, how did the process of working on it went? With the remix, you mean? Yeah, and. Mm-hmm. And mostly, um, you're, you're prominently a remix artist, right? Uh, I, I think I probably, uh, numbers over numbers, do uh, do more originals than remixes, but mm. I do a lot of remixes. Um, I consider myself mostly, you know, a Split creator 50, 50? of original songs. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, but I like to, you know, spread myself around. All right. So the process of working for the Hey Ocean thing, how, how did you heard of it? How did you start on it? And when was how was the whole process like? Um, well, I just, you know, saw the contest and started. I downloaded the audio stems, uh, you know, the vocals just individually. And then I uh, I just kind of let, uh, let my creative juices get flowing and I played around with a few notes, um, brought a few of my favorite uh, custom synthesizers up, or not synthesizer, but custom presets I've made. That's usually how I start a song. Uh-huh. I have a, you know, I have a few libraries of uh, synthesizers that I've made. Sometimes I use ones that I haven't made. I try to avoid that, but, you know, sometimes some just sound so good. <laughs> um, so. And, and then I just play around with those, uh, play around with a few melodies, and then uh, usually what comes next is I, uh, I uh, start, start adding a beat to it, which is what I did. I added just a some kick pattern, um, which is how the song begins. And then I throw in uh, some you know, snares, kick, snare, kick, snare. Very simple beat in that song. But, um, you know, what I did is I kind of layered things on top of each other just again and again and again and progressed it as it went. Because this song has the same chord progression the entire way through. So how I make it interesting is just by, uh, by layering things on top of each other since it all goes together after the chorus course um for that remix i threw in a, a nice little progressive house drop and it's a nice uh, a-b-i-c-i-i i think i think you pronounce it abc I, i've never i've never known how to pronounce that name correctly but um, oh it's okay it's okay yeah. if you said it wrong somebody might correct you knowing yeah, our show nobody will <laughs> i yeah i don't know him so dan any questions um actually yes because last time I asked this last, I'm going to ask this first now. Why the name Aviators? Oh, I get this a lot. There's a lot of confusion around my name um, because I, of course, my name is Aviators and with with a big S there. Um, and I'm one guy. <laughs> you know, I'm not a band. So people get yeah. confused with that. And also my channel name is Sound of the Aviators, <laughs> which is a kind of just a creative way of, you know, making a, 
making a channel name because obviously Aviators is taken. That's a very common name. So I had to come up with something original. So I thought, okay, Sound of the Aviators. Sounds cool, right? Except yeah. it's so common because my YouTube channel is so prominent uh, that people think that's my name. <laughs> you know, it's not. My, my name was never intended to be Sound of the Aviators. The biggest mis misconception is that Sound of the Aviators is my artist name and Aviators is my nickname. <laughs> it's, that's not how it is. Sound of the Aviators is just my website and my YouTube name. Like, oh, okay. You know, it's it's as if it's like um, the official Aviators or Aviators Music or something like that. You know, it's just a, uh, a stylized way to say this is my channel. Okay. Yeah, understood. I mean, your Tumblr is the same, isn't it? Um, my Tumblr is Aviators Music, so oh, that's okay, a little sorry. more that's generic. But my website is Sound of the Aviators. So earlier you mentioned that you have some rigs set up for recording acoustic sound, correct? Uh, yeah. So yeah. other than your voice, what else do you record? Like, what acoustic instruments do you use and what do you leave to the synths? Um, the only thing I record uh, acoustic is uh, guitar. And even okay. that, most of the time, I, you know, run it through a, uh, an amp. So it's not technically acoustic. Um, the only real acoustic guitar I've ever played in a song is in Open Your Eyes, my, my latest groaning song. Mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, during the bridge. There's uh, just a little bit of acoustic guitar in the background. That's the only actual acoustic guitar I've ever put in a song. Now what about the one that's just Apple Bucket? Uh, that's, that's all electric. Oh, sounded quite acoustic. Maybe I need to get my ears checked. Well, I mean, it's it's still a guitar. I still played it, you know, into an amp and stuff. Okay. So it's technically recorded, but it's oh, also right. it's also uh, it's not an acoustic guitar. It's an electric guitar. Um, and of course, I record my vocals. You know. Ah. Okay, that's interesting. Um, looking at your channel here, you've done a lot of songs, and I noticed you um, mix it around with guest artists like Glaze, Brunified, and... Feathers. Feathers, yes. Yeah. And how did you guys work together? What was the process? Like, you contact them, or they contact you, or was... Um, sometimes it's, uh, it can be both ways. Um, for Feather... That, that one kind of just happened on its own. Um, people, some people told me I should do a song with her. Some people told her she, she should do a song with me. So we actually just kind of contacted each other at the same time <laughs> and just said, let's do a song. So we're just like, okay, let's do it. That's to me. And, uh, and usually a collaboration involves, uh, um, you know, for, for example, Feather, she uh, recorded some vocals, and I, and I threw the vocals on top of a backtrack. My backtrack was already done when she recorded the vocals, so uh, so you know I didn't build it around her vocals. You know, her vocals were sang, sung on top of mine. So um, how did that one happen? Like, did you ask her to sing this specific tune, or uh, she actually wrote much of the vocal melody for that song? Um, so often I will write a vocal melody for people and just tell them specifically what to sing, usually giving an example by singing it myself, and then uh -huh. they just sing over my voice. But, you know, in that case, she just uh, kind of made it up as she went. It sounded really good. Okay, cool, cool. So I noticed a lot of remixes here. So obvious question is, how long does it take you to remix a song? Oh gosh, it can take anywhere from uh, two hours to a week. Depending on the song and difficulty of it? Yeah. Some remixes are very simple. Like uh, the Hey Yoshi remix, that took, only took me about three hours. That was a very simple remix. I don't know if you guys have ever heard my Loyalty remix uh, by you know, Manda Yes, Kony, I have. I have heard that one. Um, that That is a very complex remix, actually. There's a lot of individual parts, a lot of automation, um, and a lot of unique melodies that took time to come up with. I yeah, spent you a, I all a lot of time. Well, I'm, I, and I'm proud of that, you know, because, and also it became very popular. That's you know, one of my most viewed videos. And it, and often I find uh, spending time, time on things like that does pay off, but, you know, not, not always, but often, 
know, what I spend the most time on does uh, end up being the most popular. Except, the exception is, of course, my song Friendship. <laughs> um, uh-huh. That song, I probably spent a total of maybe four or five hours on that total. Whoa, that was that's... a really quick song. Wow. Um, wow. Of course, that, that was split over two days, but still. What were you saying? I was taking a trip down with a friend to go and see Norman. We were listening to that in the car, and we were thinking, how long did it take to write this? You know, it was so much orchestral work. And back then, I was a bit, you know, ignorant to how synths work. I thought you hired an orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish. Uh, you ain't no Daniel Ingram. <laughs> no. I don't think he even hires an orchestra. Uh, I think he did once. EHX yeah, right. probably has an in-house one, Does, do they? No, I think it's just once, just for the lulls. I don't really remember. I'm almost positive he, sa- he, use, he uses samples. I remember... I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I remember he had a interview he did once where he was sampling some tracks to some executive people and one of the execs says, Oh, you hired orchestra? No, I just used this program. Oh, you're hired. <laughs> uh, that's why... Uh, that's why I- well, yeah, orchestras are expensive. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So, yeah, if you can work with an orchestra, uh, yeah, you're going to get hired. <laughs> oh, boys. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, orchestral uh, scoring is actually kind of, you know, musicians are losing their jobs <laughs> because you can do what you need to do with a computer, you know? Yeah. Uh, but... Even movie soundtracks. I know, like, what's his, what's his name? Danny Elfman and um, Hans Zimmer. They're using a lot of sample uh, things. A lot of their Zimmer uses samples. Well, no, 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 no. His uh, his orchestras are still orchestras, but I believe a lot of his samples, okay. uh, or drum samples rather, are uh. um, are you know those heavy hitting uh, beats. Um, you know the pounding war drums are often a sample. You know those are oh. the same uh, sample libraries that I use. You know, of course, he uses them a lot more uh, fluently, but still. Yeah, that's when musicians get together and they're like, oh, I know which sample you used. He has years of experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he uses synth, I will break into his house and steal his hard drive. <laughs> oh, boy. You are an evil person, then. It's for the music. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's why I fall in love with uh, Make Music Garitan. That's the sample pack that I use. Ah, okay, cool. So, have you tried that one before? Uh, I have not. Okay. It's actually the first and only one that I know of because before I found out about others, there was just this personal orchestra thing that I found online. And I was like, an orchestra for myself? Really? Yay. <laughs> uh, I'm looking it's here at your orchestra in the computer. Yeah. Oh, you you just uh, feed them once and they're happy. <laughs> Yay. Yep, definitely. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, I'm taking a look at your gallery or YouTube page here and looking at all the songs. And I noticed that you do a lot of original songs that does not relate to MLP at all. And how does the idea for those songs come up? And do they get a good uh, reception from your fans? Uh, a lot of a lot of my non burry songs actually do get a lot of good reception. My song Constellations is quite uh, has become quite popular. That's not really a Brody song, um, and. You know, I as far as inspiration goes, I just get inspiration from, you know, my everyday experiences. You know, just different things I've gone through, different thoughts. Inspiration comes from anywhere, you know? Mm, okay, that's a good answer because... Now that you mentioned uh, Constellations, what do you mean by it's not really a Brony song? Because I listen to that a lot and I'm trying to crack the meaning. <laughs> it's, uh, it's... Well, it's... I want to... I want to say it's just a song about uh, finding answers and uh, kind of soul searching. But there was no uh, Brony references in mind when I made it. Afterwards, you know, I kind of, uh, you know, I kind of said, "Oh yeah, it's about Luna." <laughs> uh, it, 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 well, no, I didn't actually say that. I said there's a reference to Luna, and there is. It hints at the fact that it could be about something Brony related, and the fact that um, you know it uses the. Uh, the metaphor, I'll spread my wings, which, of course, could refer to Luna or some other pony with wings. Um, but then again, it was it's intended as a metaphor, uh. um, you know, just relating to uh, any human. Okay, it, it's an open metaphor there, I see. Exactly. But it makes sense. And, you know, you 
You said it's a song about finding answers, and now you just given me the answer I've been looking for for a long time. That's right. <laughs> well, the answer is searching right. for the answer. Uh, you should not have told him. No, when I get to the car and I put it on the playlist, it's like, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? Oh, you should have not told him. I like him confused. <laughs> um. I won't be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> be looking up in the sky, tracing them constellations, and be like, oh, so that's what he was talking about. <laughs> Oh, boys. So, uh, I see here you have a um, song called Doctor Who's Sweet. Yeah. I listened to it and I love it. Um, Thank you. Inspiration for this? Like, were you watching Doctor Who and say, I could do a remix of that song or something like that? Uh, That's kind of basically what it was. I love the, uh, not not the theme song necessarily, but uh, some of the uh, character themes, like I Am The Doctor. Mm Mm-hmm. The theme song to Doctor Who's not that great. <laughs> I've never liked it much. Yeah. Uh, but but the soundtrack itself. Uh, and I... Th- my Doctor Who suite is mostly the tune to I Am The Doctor, um, which is a song from the show. Um, you know, background. Yeah, I, I heard of it. I heard of it. I, for people who might not know, it's a background song for the Doctor's team when he appears on screen. Right, whenever he's doing something awesome. Yes. Basically, it plays. Yeah. <laughs> so it's basically that. Oh, no wonder it was so full of awesome. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but no, um, during the process, of which Doctor were you inspired by? 9, 10, or 11? 11, definitely. He's my favorite so far. Matt Smith, really, now. I like David Tennant as well, but Matt Smith is my favorite. Oh, so you watch Doctor Who from season one, which is the Nine Doctor, or were you a original Doctor fan? Oh, I've never watched any of the originals, and I really have no desire to. <laughs> so basically, you watch from the Nine Doctor then. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So no, because the the thing is, when I mentioned, oh, the first season, ah, the first season of the Nine Doctor. It's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about plot holes and confusion in My Little Pony, talk about Doctor Who. <laughs> uh, well, I know that, that um, the plot basically just makes no sense because uh, of the whole time travel thing. Yeah. You know, everything's all twisted up. Yeah, but we, we just watch it because of the Doctor. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. Dan, any questions? Yes, uh, I would like to ask you a bit about your song, one of your more popular ones, One Last Letter. I see that it's kind of like a bit of a diversion from your usual um, electronic music kind of pattern to metal. So what sparked this? Basically, I discovered Bronified on YouTube. And I, oh. uh, I saw him and I'm like, oh my gosh, we need to do a song together. So I emailed him and he uh, messaged me back, said, okay, let's do a song. And we... We, like, basically just collaborated within a week and just, you know, put out that song really quick. Uh, I wrote some lyrics. Uh, he, uh, I came up with the basic melody of the song. He put down guitars and drums. And uh, that was our first of many collaborations. You work fast. Wow. I, I, I do try to work fast because uh, something uh, Sim Gretna said once, um, Sim Gretina, uh, that's another name I never seem to pronounce uh, correctly. <laughs> Uh, he's an awesome guy. Um, I'm hoping to do a song with him soon, actually. Um, and he he mentioned once that he creates songs quickly because he doesn't want to lose the inspiration before he finishes the song. Uh, that is something I can totally relate to because that's why I try to work quickly. Because if I lose interest in creating a song, it's not going to be fun to listen to. You know, it's yeah. Because then I just get, I just get bored and I just throw things on. You force uh, it just right? for the sake. Yeah, I force it, and it, that never comes out very well. Mm. There's a few musicians I know who do multiple projects at once. So um, he'll be finished with this project at 5%, and then he'll start off another project, and that will be finished at 10%, and then he'll work on this one. I, I know a few persons that do that kind of thing. Um, I think Tombstone is one of those people who does that method of working. If you talk about life, that sounds a lot like me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I definitely multitask as far as songs go. Yay! And then uh, later on, when I got uh, after party, I heard the variation in what, what does VIP stand for again? Um, variation in production. Yeah, and how did that one come about? That is 
absolutely crazy. Um, that was just, uh, I was playing, that actually didn't start out as a remix. That started out as an original song. Oh. Uh, and then I just kind of started uh, with a chord progression. And then after making like half of the song, I realized, wait, this is the same chord progression as one last letter. <laughs> so I threw the vocals on top and then I realized, okay, this actually sounds really good. And uh, then it just became a VIP remix. So that's the reason why it sounds so different is because it was originally a different song. Wow. Well, it sounded so close to the original. It's the same thing with my remix of uh, Prince Whatever's uh, The Fight Within. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard that one. Um, but oh, yeah, I did, I did. It's pretty awesome. Thank you. But that um, that song originally started as something else. It was just going to be an original, you know, Moomba Core song. And then I realized, wow, I should get some uh, screaming on this. I should get someone to scream. And then I, uh, and then I just kind of realized, or I could just <laughs> take some vocals and throw them on here. And I did. <laughs> Yay! Remix oh, done. Awesome. So well. You know, it doesn't always happen that way, that a song will just fit into something else. But once in a while, you know, I'll create something a little bit generic at first. And at that point, it's usually pretty easy to slip in a vocal stem and just work with it. For hmm. that matter, did the song Melody intend to have vocals? Uh, yeah, that was always going to have vocals. I had a feeling it would. Yeah, that was uh, that was always intended to be a... Um, a vocal dubstep song. Dubstep? That's something rare I don't hear from you that much. Oh, you should hear his dubstep. It's awesome. I know. I, I've heard uh, of it. I've, I've heard some of it. But um, listening to most of your songs, I, I don't hear much dubstep in them. I don't... Dubstep is uh, not my favorite to create. It's kind of fun sometimes. Uh, but it's also very controversial. And I, n- not a lot of my fans actually like it. Um, some do, of course. There's some people who listen to me and li- they love, uh, you know, EDM. They love uh, dance music, uh, dubstep, all that good stuff. But a lot of uh, people who listen to me enjoy quieter vocal stuff, more melodic things. So when I do a dubstep song, there's often a lot of people who just, you know, come to me saying, you know, oh, this this is not what I like. <laughs> do something else. And as much as I, as much as I don't like to listen to people who who are just complaining because it's not their kind of thing. I do listen to people. And when there's a lot of people saying something, I do tend to try to cater to, uh, you know, what they're hoping to hear. And of course, that doesn't mean I'm never going to do dubstep. I still do it sometimes. Yeah. I, I like the way you inject it into some of your songs by not making it a completely dubstep track. Right. Kind of has, still has that. It still works because it's just not fully dubstep. Right. Well, I try to do that. You know, I try to mix up genres instead of making it blatantly one thing. Basically, you don't drop the bass like the tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, uh, yeah, he's definitely got a unique style of dubstep there. Yep. Tombstone is really amazing with his dubstep. Like, it's like somebody, going, somebody coming into a room with flashy clothes and big pair of glasses. Like, oh, there's a, there's a tombstone song. There's a tombstone song. Yeah, I know. He has his style. And good on him. His style is amazing. I know, he's, he's very unique, and he's really made a name for himself, and I, you know, and that's good, good for him, you know? True, but so every, everybody's you know. special in their own way, and I have to say, right. your song, it has its own, um, what's word I'm looking for? Character. Character oomph to it. And I have to say, like, hmm. I, I enjoy your song. I really enjoy your album. Well, thank you. Which album do you mean? It's the one that was... On SoundCloud, the song... I like the adventure. Uh, I That's definitely, uh, um, it's definitely my most uh, well-known album, the adventure. Uh, my new album, From All Sides, actually just barely passed that in sales. So that has now become my best-selling album of all time. Ooh, awesome. So, we need to promote it. <laughs> yes. Everybody go buy it. No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, the, the song I was referencing to is uh, Equestria Revolution. Oh, that one. Right, my remix album. Kind of strange. I think I found it on EQD. Yeah, I'll, I usually uh, get in those uh, album posts whenever I release something. They're pretty good about um, posting new albums. 
But no, most of your songs, seriously, they're really awesome. And I think people should really go and support your song. Not just as uh, coming on here and to promote your stuff. We do do that. But still, honestly speaking, go buy. His songs are awesome. Well, thank you. And the best part is, you can name your own price and on some of the songs. And they're not as expensive as popular artists. Uh, yeah, I try to... When I can, I like to uh, offer, you know, a free EP now and again. Uh, both the Equestrian Revolution albums are free. A Dream Revisited EP, which is also free. Well, when I say free, I mean pay what you want. And yeah. when you go to, you know, pay for it, you can enter zero. That does work. I like to be able to offer uh, things to people who can purchase things online. Because I don't, I don't want to just limit myself to people who can pay. You know, I want people to be able to listen. And even the music that you do have to pay for, like uh, like a couple of my new albums, um, I like to put some of that on YouTube so people can hear it anyway. Um, yep. Sure, you can't download it, but you can listen to it. And on Bandcamp, you can listen to every single song on my albums. You know, you can just go there and click the play button. Full it's preview. not an iTunes preview. Yeah, you can get to hear the full song. So people do complain a lot that, oh, I can't, I can't buy things online, I can't hear your music. Well, sure you can. I, it's all right there, you know, you just can't download it. Yeah, and if you're so really can... internet smart, you'll find a way. <laughs> sure, you can pirate it, I guess. Yeah, but yeah. what's the point? If you really want to support him, buy the song. And you don't get it in 320k BPS, goodness. Indeed. Right. You can convert it, but it's still not the same. Well, and you won't yeah, get, you will never much. be able to download it. In True. Because SoundCloud will block that. <laughs> Indeed. So, um, looking through your store, I noticed something interesting. <laughs> Apparently, you visited Las Vegas' Unicorn? I did, yeah. I was there. So, um, mind telling us, how was it? <laughs> um, that was interesting. Uh, it was actually a really fun convention. Um, I had a lot of fun hanging out with uh, my musician friends. I met a lot of great people. Um, I, it was my first time running a merch booth. Um, that was a lot of fun, you know, just having somewhere where people could come and meet me. Um, you know, I just got to meet a ton of people who, uh, you know, I had talked to online, uh, people who listened to my music. Um, it was a lot of great encouragement. Uh, my performance was horrible. Oh, God. <laughs> that was, that was bad. Uh, but just, just because I was getting sick and I lost my voice on stage. Oh, God, no. Um, I managed to recover it, uh, you know, for a couple parts there, but there were a couple a couple times where I just, I lost it. Any backup from your friends? What do you mean, vocal backup? Yeah, like, um, guest performance from so-and-so person just to, oh no, he's losing his voice. I might as well pop in and crash his party or something like that. Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't have any, uh, guess, guess, uh, back up when I lost my voice but uh, for my song Home I did perform it with Pony One Kenobi which was a lot of fun okay awesome well at least it wasn't a total waste right it was a fun performance even if it was a little messy true that's what matters you had fun and that was great because I think bronies aren't like those class okay not to diss classical musicians but some of these crowds that can't have fun as soon as somebody screws up on stage <laughs> oh yeah you know fun it, I think I think it was a really great crowd there. You know, that, that made the performance fun. Mm -hmm. You know, even if I was messing up, they were still loving it. Oh, awesome. So, um, the real question now is the aftermath. Like, we all know what happened at Las Vegas' Unicorn. And it put a sour note on the Brony fandom. So, how was it after, um, after everything has been announced? Because I heard a few stories here and there, like the rooms were in total chaos. How was it from uh, your point was, of view? It was a little scary there, um, right as the, uh, as the uh, con went bankrupt, because, of course, you know, we kind of got ended right away. They basically said, okay, we got to get out of here or they're going to impound everything we have in here. Because um, they were bringing in, they were bringing in security guards um, and, there was at one point where they there were people in the hotel, uh, like security guards, who were looking for people from uh, Las Pegasus, uh, trying to collect money for rooms. So none of us could go downstairs. We were all having to hide in our rooms because, you know, for the people who had uh, 
rooms paid by uh, the con, you know, all the musicians, basically, uh, their rooms were not paid for. So the security, what they were supposed to have been paid for, you know, the con con people said, oh, yeah, we paid for all the rooms. Nope. (laughs) You know, nothing was paid for. Um, So, you know, we had people after us. Uh, You know, it didn't. It didn't get that chaotic, but it was a little scary there for a while. I would be really, really, for lack of a better word, pissing my pants. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's a, that's one way to say it. Well, let's just say chaos. Uh, Discord had fun. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, John Delancey. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh boy. I, I don't think John Delancey even had fun. Yeah, I never even saw him, really. I don't know where, oh. where he went. Um, There. Yeah, I just... I mean, I know he had his little meet and greet thing. Uh, I guess he had a panel too that I missed, but I don't know. Yeah, once in a it was a very time. rough uh, convention, organization wise. Mm. Uh, as far as uh, you know, who was there? It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, um, just you mentioned. I think, I think the problem is though they were estimated to have about six thousand people there. They had about eight hundred. Oh, uh, overshot. Um, yeah, so they really, really uh, kind of overdid it and didn't realize that there's a possibility that there wouldn't be that many people there. Yeah, true. It, they're in the middle of nowhere. They're kind of trapped in a prison town. Well, I mean, Vegas is a big show town, so yeah. it's a good location. But uh, then again, it's, uh, you know, it, it was a flop anyway. Yeah, I think the convention was not, the, the convention was not right for the location. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. Well, I mean, even the name Las Pegasus in the show that's a parody of Los Angeles. Yeah, I know, but you know, the, I, they really they screwed up using the name, so I should have thought of that coming. Yeah, but I, I think most of the Brony fandom uh, relates Las Vegas with Las Pegasus. Really? I've always heard that it was uh, Los Angeles. To Las o- Pegasus. Officially, yes. Um, officially, in the map, it's a reference to Los Angeles. But Bronies, right. bef- before the map came out, Bronies says that was um, Vegas. Yeah, I guess that's true. So I guess there has been kind of confusion there. Yeah. So now, talking about conventions, um, are there any conventions that you're planning to go to? Um, I'm planning on going to Bronicon this summer. Oh, awesome. Ooh. What about uh, Evergreen so, Northwest? Uh, I don't think I'm going to make it, sadly, because I'm going to be uh, starting school this fall. Um... So I'm not sure exactly when the dates for it for are, but I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. It's the 7th of June, if I'm not mistaken. July, sorry. Oh, July, really? Yeah, it's in July. Oh. So it's earlier. Oh, well, um, yeah, I probably still won't be able to make it just due to money, but uh, but that's good that I actually could go if I had the funds. So for BronyCon, are you performing or just visiting? I unfortunately uh, missed the deadline for signing up for performances, and I... Uh, couldn't perform. Oh. oh. Um, you, you know so. what? Here's a, here's a trick I learned uh, to bypass all those things. Get a friend, say, let me perform with you. Uh, I might be doing that. We'll see. I thought <laughs> yeah. I wanted to perform uh, lights with me, so we'll see if that happens. Ooh, okay. Yay! I'm Bypassing uh, the system. All the way from here. Uh, are they going all to right. stream? I'm not sure. What did you say? Are they going to stream this year? Oh, I'm sure they are. They always, uh, at least Everfree always streams. They have to. EQLA, if I remember right, they didn't stream. No, they didn't stream EQLA. Really? Yeah. Well, that was a pretty small convention, though, I think, wasn't it? Mm, 100% sure. It was smaller than BronyCon. Yeah, mm. that was that was so sure. Well, I mean, obviously, but, you know, still. Oh, well, no problem, then. So, Dan, any more questions? So, uh, you were classically trained as a musician, correct? Well, I wouldn't say I was classically trained, but I did, uh, you know, I took a few violin lessons for a few years. Did you undergo any exams? Um, what do you mean? Just like, you know, those educational music exams? exams? Created music. No, I, no, I never did any of that. Oh, okay. So, you said you're starting school. Music career on the way? Uh, yes, indeed. I'm going for a uh, Bachelor of Science in Music Business. Wow. Science music business. How does that even work? That is an amazing new twist. Yeah. Well, I mean, of course, a Bachelor of Science is just, you know, a type of uh, degree. So 
it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going into the science of music, but it's, you know, music business. So all the, all the production tactics, all the, uh, all that kind of good stuff. Huh. So it's like sound engineering and welcome to the industry kind of course. Exactly. And it's a, it's a, it's a musical education too. Um, you know, it's, I'm going to be uh, learning, you know, how to play certain things. I forget the requirements. I think you have to, uh, Learn an instrument? You, you are required to uh, be fluent in piano, uh, guitar, I, which I already play guitar, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And then you need to have certain production skills. Uh, oh. Production skills, no problem, I think. <laughs> Is this a well, postgraduate course by any chance? What do you mean, as far as a college postgraduate? Yeah. Uh, no, it's just, uh, no, it's just a four-year degree. Oh, okay. Sounds interesting. They don't have that here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a. It seems like a great school. I visited. Um, it's gonna be a. It's gonna be a good experience. Well, wishing you the best of luck. Sure. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anyway, so um, let's move on to the off pony topics because talking about pony sometimes can get boring, and so my favorite. Do I, to- think, do I think I know where you're going? What? Okay, okay, okay. Let's just say right now, no more Xbox One. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we won't be bashing the Xbox One because it's done its job. <laughs> All right, that's true because it's perfect. So, but it's still gaming related. So, what's your favorite game? What's your favorite video game to play? Because I see oh, here Sonic much. Three. So, Sega fan maybe? I like how you assume that he's a gamer. <laughs> um. No, I am a gamer. Um. Quite a PC gamer. I do actually own a Sega Genesis with all the classic Sonic games, you know, just for nostalgia. Um, and I do love the Sonic series. Uh, I think my favorite game of all time, though, would probably be Fallout New Vegas. <laughs> You're the second person to say that. And the obvious question to go with that one is, have you read Fallout Equestria? <laughs> I have not. <laughs> I probably oh. should, but I haven't. Oh, it's too long. It's too long and too heavy. That, that's my issue. I just I just don't have the time to read something like that. Understandable. So you said that you're a big PC gamer and a Sega. Uh, you own a Genesis and you play all the good Sega games. So um, have you played any other Sonic games from the newer generations? Like oh, oh, Adventures? Yeah, all. Really, all of them? I, I was... I'm a- a uh, pretty active member of the Sonic fandom, actually. I was I was a while before uh, the Brony fandom. Oh, really? Um, no. And yes, I know that's the most annoying <laughs> fandom in the world of, of all the internet. That's the worst fandom. But still, um, you know, that's I love the Sonic series, uh, all of the games. Um, <laughs> I think probably my favorite of the n- new generations is probably Sonic Generations. Oh, uh, I've been trying to get that one because it's I've really good. I've seen Let's Play of it and I love how they mix together with the classic 2D side-scrolling game and the 3D um, new perspective and mixing with the new generation. Oh, I don't know, I just, I just want to play it but I can't find it. Uh, they have it on uh, Steam if you have a good gaming PC. That's the problem. on Steam? Yeah. Yeah, wow. Sonic Generations. I don't I have. I don't have a good gaming PC. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, oh. The only thing I can play on there is Diablo Three, and it's running on minimum settings. Oh, that's, that's too bad. I know. I, I recently bought um, Just Cause Two because it was on discount, and Just Cause Two was fun, and playing it on my PC, <laughs> it no fun. Yeah. <laughs> You kind of need a decent gaming PC to play some games. I I hope I'm talking about decent gaming PCs. Well, well, I'm running a uh, a Mac, um, which is you know known for not being good for gaming. <laughs> uh, but I I actually never had any problems. I mean, I I do run Windows and OS X on my on both my Mac computers. Oh, okay. Um, and once you have Windows, you can run basically any game ever. You know, it's, <laughs> yes. I mean, it, it, you know, Macs are pretty darn powerful. At least the computers I have. I know not all Macs are created equal, but, you know, I always tend to get the uh, top of the line, most powerful I can get. And I know my MacBook runs, uh, you know, 
know, Fallout New Vegas on ultra high settings, <laughs> beautifully, no lag. Oh, it's lovely. Using Windows? Oh uh, yeah. Running parallel? Uh, yep. Parallels. That's what I use. I thought you. I do camp. Wow. Well, I have uh, parallels on my laptop, and then I have boot. I run boot camp on uh, my desktop. Because, because of course, uh, FL Studio, my main music program, that's a Windows only program. So mm-hmm. all my music making is in Windows, despite me having two Macintosh computers. Hmm. Okay, okay. That's just kind of an interesting choice I've made. <laughs> okay. I mean, you do use Logic, and Logic is a Mac only program. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. So I do switch over to Logic sometimes. You have that's the, the reason I have OS X on my PC so that I can <laughs> use Logic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it ain't working so well. <laughs> nah, that's the problem. Uh, but I, I have to say, you have the best of both worlds. Yep, yeah, that's definitely the way I've uh, I've uh, kept it because I like the you know the options to have the Mac only things and then the Windows only things. Because of course there's there's a lot more Windows only things, but then again, Logic has some really great features that I like to have access to. I like how it's cross compatible with GarageBand, so people who you know you work with, those who have GarageBand, you can bring them up to your level. Yeah, that is a help. I never really did much of the crossover stuff. I just kind of dove right into it, but. Okay. It's still nice to, a nice feature to have. But it's great to hear you started with GarageBand. Not many musicians started with GarageBand, and in fact, a few that I know just went straight to FL, and I don't know how they did it. Um, yeah, FL's not that hard to get started with, but it's, it's GarageBand is a great, easy place to begin. The, the issue, though, I've found with a lot of artists is that once you get into GarageBand, it's hard to get out, <laughs> because then everything else seems really hard. It locks you, you in know? because there's no media export. Well, ex- yeah, exactly. It's very, you know, it's just, it's hard to switch over to something else once you use GarageBand for everything. Yeah. Because if there's no, you know, you can use plugins and stuff, but, you know, you have to use GarageBand-only stuff most of the time, and then that doesn't transfer into anything else. It's just really hard to switch. But I, I made the switch, and it was very worth it. Actually, that's just, just a curious question. Does GarageBand accept VSTs? Uh, it accept, accepts uh, AU plugins, which is the Mac equivalent oh, of VST. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. So, on to the off-topic things. Uh, you, what current games are you playing right now? Um, uh, I'm still playing through Skyrim. <laughs> uh, I, I actually have... I, I know people have finished that a thousand times over by now, but I, I only started playing that a few months ago. Um, I, let's see what else I'm playing. Uh, Don't Starve. It's a really great game I've been playing. Nice survival indie game. Oh. Um, that's about it as far as things I've been playing. I've been playing Fallout New Vegas still, you know, still going through that. Okay. Um, yeah, that's about it. I can't finish Skyrim. I'm I'm the type of player who eat, every time when there's a side quest activated, ooh, finish side quest first. Yeah, yeah I, I'll be the same kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably never finish it either, but it's fun. It is I a great know. game. I just love the Relenting Force. Who's oh, sure, uh, The skill is the most popular meme ever Quite created abused yeah. oh yeah most popularly abused meme ever yeah, yeah. the best thing is the laser <laughs> no no but okay now, um, now I just now a big discovery was made the other day um that basically took the internet by storm I don't know if you guys have heard this but you know this the meme until I took an arrow to the knee mm-hmm. uh-huh. you know um of course, you know, that there's just a random guy in Skyrim who says, uh, you know, I used to be an adventurer like you until I took an arrow in the knee. <laughs> yep. um, that is actually um, like Norse slang for getting married, <laughs> taking an arrow in the knee. Oh. So this whole time, this whole time, we've been thinking, oh, you know, he took an arrow in his knee. But no, he got married. That's what he <laughs> meant this Ooh. whole time. Someone just discovered that the other day. That is actually uh, Norse slang. Really? No. And why wasn't it discovered soon? I don't know. But I looked it up and that's actually slang. 
I mean, I'm assuming that's what they meant in the game because, you know, they're... It I'm, could just be because that makes a lot more sense. I mean, why would you it? say arrow to the D? Why would you go for the Achilles heel reference instead? You got a point there. Right. Yeah. 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 No, 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 just, you know. I just found that funny. No, you know, and uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, the arrow to the knee meme lives on. <laughs> yep. Yep. Best you just show people ever. your wedding ring and they'll get the reference. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, awesomeness. I have to ask this question because if I don't, I know a certain five iron brony would be mad at me. So, do you play Team Fortress 2? I wouldn't say I play Team Fortress 2. I have it. I've played it before. It's not It's not my favorite game. I find it a little boring after a while. Oh, you know? oh but my fan won't agree with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. he would agree. But, um... But if we were to start something like um, play Team Fortress 2 all together, like I invite a few friends and I invite you, would you be interested? Sure. I mean, yeah, I'll play. I just don't play it that much. Oh, see. So you're more like less than serious, but you just like to play for the stress relief? Well, I'm more like I'll just play if friends invite me, you know, sometimes. Mm, okay. Awesome. We'll get you on Steam after this. All right. <laughs> we'll try and think of something. <laughs> So I think those are the questions, right? Yep, that's it for me. Alright, I think let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shout-outs. My shout-out goes to you, Aviators. Thank you for coming on the show. Oh, thank you. Um, it was stressful to get you on, but it was totally worth it. Yeah, sorry about that. Ah, it's okay. I deal with stress. Oh, yeah, okay. He deals with me, let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. And then... And what about you? Shout out? Oh no, no shout outs from me. Thanks. Oh, oh you, you're a grumpy, you're a grumpy kitty, aren't you? <laughs> uh, no, I'm actually in a good mood today. Grumpy cat. <laughs> yeah, I'm the human incarnation of that cat. Okay. Oh. No shout. It's your cat, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty much, actually. You're right. How'd you guess? <laughs> or maybe you are a cat. I've never seen your face, so I don't know. It's right there on my Skype. <laughs> this illusion. Well, how do I know that's not just a picture of a random guy? Maybe you are just a cat. This whole time. Wow. Mind blown. Mind Mind blown again. My fingers. (laughs) But anyway, aviators, what about you? (laughs) Any shout outs to give? I'd love to give a shout out to uh, Grumpy Cat. Uh, No. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, I'd always like to give a shout out to uh, some of my best musician friends Living Tombstone, Brony Fied, Gilding Cats. Those guys I always collaborate with. Uh, those are all awesome guys. Love to give a shout out to my new album, uh, uh, from all sides. Uh, if people listening haven't heard it, go check it out. Give it a little listen. It's you can listen to the whole thing for free on my Bandcamp page. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. So basically, where can they find you and where can they find your stuff besides the YouTube? Well, my YouTube, if you look at the banner, there's all kinds of uh, links at the top there. Uh, You can click on those. That's a pretty good way to navigate to all my stuff. Other than my YouTube, though, uh, you can always visit me at soundoftheaviators.com or music.soundoftheaviators.com will bring you to my my music store uh, if you want to bypass all the main junk on my website. So yeah, that's where you can find me. So, anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembsshow at gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach me at norman at thembsshow.com. And you can reach Daniel, Mr. Grumpy Cat there, at daniel at thembsshow.com. You could also reach our Twitter, and the show's Twitter account is at thembsshow. I'm at Norman Sanzo. Daniel? I'm at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. And Aviators, do you have a Twitter? I do, at Aviators84. Wow, awesome screen name, 84. Um, 84, any reason? It's a cool number. That's it. Okay, no argument from me here. I'm inclined to think it's your birth year, but yeah. (laughs) It's not. It's not, actually. Okay. I'm a lot younger than that. Oh, wow. My birth year's 95, actually. Wow. What? Yeah, I'm 17. I'm not sure if this is real. silence. In 17, I was in high school. How are you going to college at 17? Wow. I'm homeschooled, so that explains a lot. Oh. Okay, okay, that makes sense. You know a joke, right? It's all real? No, yeah, I'm actually 17. I thought you guys knew that. No. 
No, actually, to be honest, Aviator 84 made me inclined to believe that you were 20-something, so... Huh. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Links will be provided in the show notes. I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. And this has been Aviators. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.
And before we start the show, I would like to say a big thank you to Microsoft for announcing the X because <clears throat> because that's my ah, frick. I forgot the line and Skype just popped in the sound. Yeah, whose <laughs> Skype is on? Mine. Oh, I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, show broken already. Oi. That's Microsoft reminding you not to make fun of them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. That's why they bought Skype just to bother me. Everybody shift to Google Plus now. Yeah, they're listening. Okay, so restarting in three, two, 